Hello, kindergarten and first grade friends. Great job on last week's uh, bird's eye view. That's from above. Normal view where you're looking just normally like you are right now. And worm's eye view when you're pretending you're a worm looking up at someone, okay? So you have to think about your camera being the bird for bird's eye, your camera being the worm for worm's eye down here. Whenever you draw a picture, the same thing is uh, true, okay? So you have to think about, am I a worm? Am I a person or am I a bird? All right, so guess what? It's time to open those bags. I know we've waited quite some time. So guess what? It's time to open them and time to talk about the different things we have. We have some paint, okay? We're not gonna use that this week. We're gonna use it next week. Just put it aside for right now. We're gonna put everything back inside of our bag. We have a straw. You will be using a straw at some point. Just go ahead and put that to the side. You have this paper, it says stop, okay? It says this art bag is for art class only. Please have this bag with you for art class. Please write your name on the line below and always keep this paper in your bag. That way, in case you misplace it or lose it, it has your name on it. We will use these supplies in our art lessons. Love, Mrs. Brenlinger. So please write your first name and your last name. Don't put anything on the back because we will use this purple paper a little bit later on. All right, we have some corrugated paper. If you feel it, go ahead and feel that paper. When you feel something and it is smooth or it's bumpy, that's called texture. Feel your hair. How does your hair feel? Feel your shirt. How does your shirt feel? Feel your skin. Boys and girls, the way things feel is called texture, okay? So we're gonna talk about texture when we do some of our lessons. And that's why you have some corrugated paper. Now, you also have, and we're, we're going through all of the fun stuff first. You have an apron here. Now the apron may be a little bit big for kindergarten and first graders, but I have it in here that way, you know, moms and dads don't get so worried about you guys getting sloppy. And here's a fun fact. If this is too big and you would like to simply do your artwork on top of it so that you don't get the floor messy, that would be super awesome too. Um, plastic bags work great. Um, Sometimes I like to do my artwork if my art table's messy. I like to do my artwork on the kitchen floor because my kitchen floor is um, like tile. So it's not going to get ruined like maybe my carpet would, okay? So again, here's an apron. Now, we have two bags, two paper bags. One of these paper bags we're going to make into a puppet. The other one we are going to make into a house. And you're not doing this right now, but I'm letting you know this ahead of time because some of you may choose to use, um, I will probably use the, the white bag for my puppet because I can color um, the, the face, okay, any color that my skin is or, you know, your skin is. So that's why I have the white one in here. But if you don't have colors and you can't match your skin tone and you think the brown one matches your skin tone better than the white one does, because guess what? I'm going to tell you right now, there's no one who is a white person. And I've seen some people who are albinos. And that means that um, they don't have the pigmentation in their skin. So they are very, 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 very pale. Um, and quite frequently they're called white. But I've put... An, it was, it was a, a, a practice. Um, they've put white paper up to their skin and said, see, even I'm not white. So there's no such thing as a white person. That's why I always say to color in your skin because everybody has so many beautiful colors in their skin. Be proud of your colors. I mean, you're, you're all beautiful and you're all different. It's awesome. So again, we'll get to these later. 
but one of these will be a house and one of these will be a person puppet. Putting those aside, we are now left with six pieces of paper. Now, if you don't have six pieces of paper, um, Mrs. Brenlinger may have miscounted. I do apologize for that. Um, when you're, you're counting, you know, three pieces of paper and then three pieces of paper again by 500, your, your hands get a little dry and it, they, get, they stick together. Some of you might have some extra paper. Some of you might have one less. No matter what, you guys are going to be okay, I promise. So I want you to feel your paper. Just take one of them, feel it, and you'll notice that when you feel the next two maybe, they might feel the same. If they feel different, this one feels thicker. Okay, I'm gonna wiggle them. When I wiggle them, okay, notice one moves a lot more than the other one, okay? This one is a lot thinner, okay? It kind of reminds me of computer paper. It's a lot thinner. We do not want to paint with that paper. That paper is for drawing only. If we paint with that paper, you are probably going to put holes in that paper and then it'll get on your carpet or on your tile and mom, dad, whoever loves you at home won't be so happy and we don't wanna make them mad. So what we're gonna do is we're going to label our papers to make it a little bit easier for us so that when we move forward with our art projects, it's gonna be super duper fun. You will need a pencil or a writing tool, a pen, a crayon, or a marker. We are going to write the letter G for good on our good paper, our strong paper. So the paper that is thicker, that doesn't wiggle quite as much, all right? And you can feel it's thicker, it's stronger paper. Hey, this is not the strong paper. It wiggles way too much. This is a lot thinner. The thin paper is our drawing paper. So on our paper that is nice and thick and strong, we have three of them, you are going to write the letter G in the top corner. Not super big, just like that. I'm gonna show you how to write the letter G. All right, friends, so I'm gonna show you how to make the letter G. We start out with a curved line that looks kind of like the letter C. Then we make a line over and down and you have the letter G. Good paper once in the corner. So G, G, G. And you'll notice that I wrote a capital G. To write the letter D, it is a capital G. We're gonna do a straight line down. Beautiful. And then we are going to connect this line using a curve line. So we come around and down, around and down, around and down, around and down until we hit here. It almost looks like a bow, like a bow and arrow like Cupid might use. Okay, we are going to write the letter D on the thin pieces of paper. Do not put them on the good pieces of paper. There's only going to be one letter on each paper we have. Thank you, friends. Okay, so now that we know how to write the letter D on that flimsy piece of paper, the thin piece of paper, we are going to write the letter D in the corner of each one. One, two, and three. Please put the D papers back inside of your plastic bag. Please make sure you put your bags, your apron, your corrugated paper or textured paper, and your purple paper back inside your bag. Put your paint back inside your bag and we are going to use one of these good pieces of paper. Put the other two back inside your bag.
we will use them another time. So that I can work, I'm gonna put my bag to the side. We are going to prep our paper for next week because next week I hope to start painting. So I'm gonna show you how to prep your work for next week. Next week, we're gonna need a crayon and some paint. I did not give you a crayon, so you might want to see if you can get a crayon for next week. And if not, um, candles work awesome, especially like the little birthday candles. If you have a birthday candle, you can use that too. If you don't have candles or crayons, you can use a marker or you can just leave it in pencil. All right, boys and girls, so I have my good paper. I know this because it has a G on it, and that's that thicker paper. You might want to put your name near the good paper. I like to put a dash here or a minus sign, and then I like to put my name. Now, boys and girls, you're not going to write my name. You are going to write your name, okay? Then I'm going to flip it over. Notice there is nothing on this side of my good paper. I am getting ready this paper for next week, so we have more time to do some coloring and painting. So remember, I said you will need crayons next week or at least one crayon or um, a candle. Now, I like to find the middle of my paper. Notice I'm holding my paper landscape style. That means it's like a school bus. So where's the middle? Is that the middle? No. That the middle? Not quite. Is that the middle? No. Is that the middle? Yeah, that looks about right. I'm going to put a little dot there so I know that that's the middle. I'm going to start with a straight line. I'm going to push nice and hard so you guys can see this. Just make a straight line down on my paper. Awesome, awesome. Now, I want to find the middle between that line and the edge of my paper. Is this the middle? No, not quite. Is this the middle? Yeah, that looks about right. I'm going to make a little dot there or a little mark. And now, I want to make a wavy line. Remember, a wavy line has valleys and hills. And the hill comes down and has a valley and comes up and goes down, has a valley and a hill. So it looks the same this way as it does from this way. You've got hills and valleys, hills and valleys. So that is a wavy line. Now I'm going to find between my straight line and my paper line, the center over here. Is this the center? No. Is this the center? No. Is this the center? Looks good. Put a dot there, and now we're gonna make a zigzag line. So we're gonna zig and zag, and zig and zag, and zig and zag. Now, notice two things. You need to make sure that your zigzags aren't super small, okay? So if you are, let me find another piece of paper for you guys. If you are doing a zigzag and you're going like this, that's going to take a while to do, okay? Plus we're going to trace over these with crayon next week, so that's going to take forever. Don't have that many zigzags, okay? Same thing with your wavy line. Your wavy line shouldn't be wavy, 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 wavy. It shouldn't be super, super skinny wavy lines, okay? It should be nice, big, wavy lines. It kind of reminds me of um, the movie with Nemo, Finding Nemo, and when Dory says, um, Wee! or she tries to talk to the whale Wee! okay that's how I make my wavy lines nice and big and flowing now I'm gonna make some lines from on this side I'm gonna make two of them 
When I do that, sometimes it's easier for me to turn my paper. If you want to leave your paper the way it is, that's fine. I'm going to make two lines and I'm going to find, I'm going to make them about equal distance. So if I notice, that's, there's a space, a space, a space, eh, eh, they're about equal. Okay, I'm going to put a little dot here and a little dot here. So they're not super close together, they're not super close to the edge. You know, do your best, okay? There's no wrong answer. If yours are super close, that's okay. I promise you. So now we're going to do a bumpy line. And remember, a bumpy line is lines that look like the letter N or M or they look like hills. But notice there's no valleys in here. Or they look like use, right? But again, we want these to be nice and big. Otherwise, if you do super tiny bumpy lines, it's going to take forever. So we're going to make a bumpy, bumpy line, a scalloped line, a Tigger line, because Tigger keeps jumping. He hops into the air as soon as he hits the ground, okay? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, you could do loop de loo lines. They will get a little bit tricky when we go to paint this, just so you know. But I want you to do any type of line here. You can make up a line. Um, I like to do something that kind of looks like a puzzle piece, okay? Puzzle piece lines are sort of fun to me. Okay? So any type of line, that's your choice, and now you're good. We need to put this back into our bag for next time because Mrs. Brenlinger is going to ask you for this paper so we can use our crayon. And if you have a crayon and you want to put your crayon in the bag, that might be a super duper idea. All right. So moving right along. All right, boys and girls, so I hope you are ready for our artwork next week. You made your awesome line pictures. Thank you so much. Hold on to them for next week when we paint. Please do not paint this week. I'm going to show you special techniques to use with the paint next week, okay? Um, right now, I'd like you, once you're done with that, to hit the next button here, the green next button, and you may go into my um, Bitmoji classroom. On the bookshelf, there are plenty of photography books. So you can explore another photographer um, that we talked about photography last week. Explore another photographer, listen to the book. When you're all done, click the number two. And you can pick your favorite artwork and share which artwork is your favorite. See you next week, guys.